Hello everybody and welcome from Eden. In fact, this is the homestead that we're at today, but uh, this is another episode, another upload in the saga that is the hoop tunnel. The trampoline frame polytunnel hoop setup. So, uh, yeah, check it out. It's only about the wind. It's very windy, but it's been lovely today, so uh, hope you enjoy it. See you in a bit. Hello! It's uh, trampoline frame tiki tunnel time again, boys and girls. This thing behind me can't get it all in, can't get it all in shot. That I've done some more cladding on it, and I'm going to be showing you uh, hopefully a lot more work today on that. Right, let's crack on. So all the window closers, these things, are now on. And they've got a back plate there. You have to cut away, obviously, so that it can turn, and you can have that sort of allotment closer put on it. Once those are open, the windows naturally vent like that, and uh, so you'll get that breeze coming through. You'll get the ventilation going through the polytunnel, and uh, hopefully prevent a lot of the rot and. Um, you know, too much moisture building up inside there because it does, it does tend to hold a lot of moisture. Very tropical inside these polytunnels. If you don't watch out, it's too tropical and things rot off. So that's that. Uh, all the cladding is is on on this side now. So that's what it's going to be left as going forward on this side. Once it's painted and it's um, it's sealed, I've got some silicon sealant. Got quite a bit of that. So I'm going to silicon seal and paint that in the end, but we're still in the construction phase at the moment. So I've cleared this path off down here, um, cleared it out better than it was before because it was full of bricks and all sorts of stuff before, uh, just so I can get to it. Now on the inside, I'll just show you the inside of it. Yeah. I've uh, took the automatic lifter off for the time being because until it's all completed, I'm going to need to get access to bits and bobs and do some do some finishing off. There's a little shelf there. I'm using all the scrap wood. That's acting both as a closer for the window, for the window to close against that uh, 4x1. And it's also a little shelf, a little, putting little pots on and stuff like that. Um, but what I will need to do now, and it's going to take me about an hour and a half of hard labour, is to shift a ton of this soil out of here. Um, ordinarily, you'd want to retain that, but it's so riddled with uh, bindweed that I'm going to get shut of that, and I'm going to get the black weed membrane, a couple of layers of that down, flatten it all off, get the weed membrane down, and then we're going to crack on. Right, so I'm going to have my work cut out for me now. So as you can see there, I've uh, started by breaking up the, the dirt uh, with the spade into more chunky sort of like one foot by one foot sections <sighs> I sound like Tony C. Smith knocking a nail in, doesn't I? I'm knackered um, sorry Tony, you do sterling work mate uh, so yeah all of this will need shifted and I reckon there's a good ten barrels full of soil that needs to be shifted so that it can be levelled off and we can get the black membrane down so that's what I'm going to be on with for the next hour because it's about half a kilometre something like that to where the dumping point is so it's half a kilometre there and half a kilometre back it's well actually no I'm telling lies there it's about half a kilometre there and back but I'm going to crack on with that <laughs> alright see you in a bit that's the reason we can't use this soil horse's tail or mare's tail you can't get shot of it it's a pain that's four wheelbarrows we're about halfway through so i think i was wrong it's going to be about eight barrows which is better than ten so yeah all the soil was shifted out of the way it was nine barrels full altogether and i've uh, sort of stamped on that and compacted the soil down a little bit the black membrane is going to go over that as well but i've got the rudiments of a table there um, which is going to be the uh, the potting and uh, a seed tray area. I've got some um, 
there's a couple of them being shot at the back there uh, I've got a couple of uh, rolls actually of the of the thick plastic the visqueen stuff thousand gauge visqueen that I'm going to put on top of that just to stop it getting too wet and what have you or I could put some uh, I've been toying with the idea of you know those um, yoga mats something like that just to put on the top but eventually all this is going to be uh, the benches along the so it's going to be 16 foot of benches and I'll just show you one of the seed trays on it now so yeah there it is the table even keeled as we can see and squared away coming off from there so yeah that's level flat level square I amaze myself sometimes boys and girls with my sheer brilliance uh, but I'm loving this project as you know and it's uh, it's getting there now we can see the end game we can see the final furlong to this and all of that side is going to be the benches obviously I'm not putting too much weight on there I'm not going to try and overload that because it still needs to be supported underneath and structurally uh, strengthened underneath uh, maybe another bar across there um, just to keep its uh, maintain its uh, its integrity but yeah I like it coming along nicely a growing space yeah so I hope you like our new bench and uh, you're following along with our progress on the polytunnel build um, all scrap wood now has been for the last two weeks because uh, none of the wood yards are open so it's just what we can find knocking around on the plot and um, I found that it was a bit warped and distorted um, because it's been left in the shed the old shed but um, once the framing was up it straightened itself out and, uh, and there you go Toothless, a toothless Tony. See you later, boys and girls. Ta da! In these troubled times, who better to speak to than a wise old elf? We always do this, me and Joe, but start talking after we've stopped filming. Part two, listen to this. This is just one of them, Joe's. These are leaks. Yep. Which again, multi-purpose compost, vermiculite. Now what Joe does, I'll put the multi-purpose compost and vermiculite in a tray this size, or a tray, bog standard seed tray size. Yeah. And then I've cut a piece of wood, it's only a piece of plywood, that is, that'll just fit in there. So it, it, that would be a little piece of wood. Yeah. Another little piece of wood, we'll do something in there. Yep. Whatever size tray it is, because of the vermiculite, it's a bit cold. So all I do then is firm it down. Tamp it, it all firm. down. You just tamp it all down, so it's firm all the way around. And then I'll sprinkle my seeds on top of that. Be with me. Yeah, just cast them on. Yeah. And then I'll use my tamper again to make sure that those seeds are touching that compost. Yeah. So they're in contact in the soil. In contact then with the compost. And then maybe a quarter of an inch more compost just sprinkled on top of that. Just a bedroom. And then I'll firm that down. So it's just like a sandwich. Yeah. But three quarters of the way is the seeds. And then that then goes in a bigger tray to soak up the water. Yeah. So and the then, holes in that tray, yeah, so it, it gets... So yeah. the water will come up to where the seeds are. And it will make the seeds then, the making contact with the moisture. Sometimes people, they'll put them, in, it doesn't always work out and you think, well, why has half my seeds come and half my seeds not come? And it's generally because they've not made contact properly with the compost and got the moisture just to start them off. Put some in, tamp it down, put your seeds in, little bit on top, tamp that down again so you've got it nice and firm. Yep. Let the water soak up, lift it out, let it drain and keep your, keep your eyes on it then just to get them stuck because if they don't germinate you fail so germination is always key it is so that's what i do belting stuff
We'll have a crack at that. We just said it's a bit like microgreens. It's a similar sort of setup, yeah. but you, they weight it down, put a top tray on top, weight it down, and and then they season underneath germinate. And after three or four days, they take off the top tray and the yellow, and then they green up when they get the sun on them. But we're we're going to do in, that. These won't go in for at least another at least another month. I'll let these get maybe eight inches tall, and then what I'll do. I'll and them's the leeks, aren't they? Them, yeah. the leeks. I'll just get a fork when I saw one, and I'll then have a clump of leeks. And then it's like when you go to the barbers, I'll just come up then and I'll cut that off so they're all the same height. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. And then I'll trim the roots by a third. And then I'll just, I just get a garden cane, poke a hole, and drop it in. And the, the more depth that goes in the soil, That'll give you your the more white, white you get. Leaks, because they'll not be ready till I don't know August. But that's what I do, and we'll do that later on. Right. Well, that'll be they one for a later stay episode. In there now and slowly come on till I'm ready for planting them out. Because the secret at the moment is, you're either sowing seeds or you're a bit behind. But if you've got stuff ready, yeah. Yep. Be patient and don't plant it out too soon. Because if we suddenly get a sharp frost, we get horrendous rain, bad weather, all this work and time and effort, you put them in early, you've lost them. Teaches your patience, doesn't After it? six or seven weeks there, I can't afford to lose that just because I'm going to put them in what I think is too early. But we can't get them from the garden centres, can we? Not at the moment, mate, no. So there you go. You've got to you've got to literally grow your own, which is what we're going to be doing later in the next episode. It'll be me, me doing my seeds, but uh, yeah, this has been... Uh, Another interesting chapter with our friend, the wise old elf, Joe Lowe. Over and out, safe, safe and distanced. Safe and distanced, clean. We've got our gels and we've got our... Antiseptics. Antiseptics and, and spritzer sprays. And every time I'm coming down, I'm spraying the locks and all around there where people hold on the gates, all that kind of stuff. It's mixed. It's just common sense, but uh, we stick to that. We'll be all right, won't we, mate? Applied common sense. Applied common sense, it is. He's having a wee there. Well, I'm not having a wee, I'm just going to walk these red onions. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, pal. See you in a bit, mate. Really, Cheers, Joe. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. It's coming along, isn't it? Isn't it? So, uh, yeah, we're going to do some seed starts tomorrow, hopefully. I'll get down. You'll get down. So, yeah, we're just at the back of the homestead at the moment with the boys. See you later on. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This is Guru Mufinda signing out. And remember, keep growing with your head down. And we love you all. Bye-bye.